Hey, my friends, if you're looking for a faster, a better way to grow and scale your landscape business, you likely don't need to join just another free Facebook group or watch another YouTube video. What you need is a proven, cohesive growth strategy for your business, along with the one-on-one coaching or group coaching and accountability to support you every step of the way. And that's exactly what the Million Dollar Academy delivers to you. The Million Dollar Academy is coaching tools, accountability, and done-for-you resources for landscapers who want to take the guesswork out of scaling and growing towards a profitable multiple six, even seven-figure-plus business without all the stress of, and all the hours of agonizing of, how do I get everything done? Or am I doing this right? Or what do I need to focus on next? The Million Dollar Academy is about thinking differently and thinking bigger about how to be a successful business owner. It's about more than just being good at landscaping. It's about how to create more profit and how to scale all while relieving some of the pressure on yourself. We do have group and one-on-one coaching spots available. So if you want to go learn more, head over to milliondollarlandscaper.com forward slash academy and get in there today. We want to take a quick second to tell you about our friends over at Cycle CPA. I can't even express to you how important it is to have a good accountant on your side. You know you want accurate bookkeeping and financial statements every month. Instead, you're often left with limited time to focus on the accounting side of your business and no reports to show for it. At Cycle CPA, the landscaping accountants, they not only handle the bookkeeping, but also provide landscape industry benchmarking, job costing, financials by service line, advisory meetings, and much more. Cycle CPA has a team of landscaping accountants available to provide anything from bookkeeping to CFO services. Visit CycleCPA.com and for $100 off, mention the Million Dollar Landscaper podcast. Easy bees easy, easy to use, easy to learn, affordable work order and time clock app with unlimited users included with every subscription. If you've ever struggled the daily grind of making and keeping track of work orders, you have to check out Easy Beasy. Make and edit work orders anytime, anywhere you're working, at your desk, in your truck, on the job site, even on your couch. With Easy Beasy, you can easily copy work orders to use over and over, which is great for mowing and plowing. You can also keep track of employee timesheets, contact your customers, add notes, instructions, even pictures of your jobs. Easy Beasy works on Android and Apple devices or any tablet or computer. Easy Beasy also has a wide variety of reports so you can have all the info you need for billing right from your phone. Say goodbye to paying for extra users because everyone gets unlimited users on Easy Beasy. Try Easy Beasy for free for 30 days. Visit easybeasy.app forward slash MDL to sign up. Easy Beasy is a simple work order and time clock app for mo crews, hardscape crews, and everything in between. Start saving time and money with Easy Beasy. Visit easybeasy.app forward slash MDL to sign up today. Welcome back to Million Dollar Landscaper Podcast. Today, I am thrilled to bring you a true powerhouse when it comes to the service industry. He is, he's not only built a successful home service business, but he's also rocked the e-commerce world as well. He has racked up tens of millions of dollars in the past decade. He's also dedicated to helping fellow home service business owners like yourselves reach the seven figure milestones. So let's give a huge, huge welcome to Matt Smith. He's the mastermind behind the service industry coach and host of the service industry podcast. Matt, it's a, it's a pleasure having you here today. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for having me, man. I'm excited. Yeah, this is great. So just for those that aren't familiar with you, just kind of give us a little background, you know, where you came from, how you got started in the service industry and whatnot. Yep. So, uh, gosh, 10, 11 years ago now I started my window cleaning business and kind of a little side note, I, in high school, I had a, I had a lawn and landscape business. So I do have a little bit of experience in that niche as well, but I started my window cleaning business back. I was 22 years old and I knew absolutely nothing. And, uh, you know, thankfully actually one of my local competitors who was much bigger than me at the time, Josh Latimer reached out to me and we became like the best of friends. And so I had a really good mentor, uh, that kind of taught me the ropes really early on. And that's kind of where I learned the power of finding somebody who's done what you're trying to do and just go learn from them. So luckily I didn't have to reinvent the wheel in my home service business. And, um, we scaled that very quickly. Uh, and I was just, you know, head to the ground focused on that for the first five years or so. And then from there, just being at the conventions and, and meeting other window cleaners and and pressure washers all across the country you know, people start asking questions like, how are you guys growing so fast? What are you doing with your marketing? And you know how that happens. Like it just kind of 
became a, a thing where I started helping other people all over the country with their marketing. And, and I was doing it for free forever, but it became a job after a while because it was so busy. And so, you know, really for the last, gosh, I don't know, four or five years, I've been like super passionate about helping other people grow their home service companies. Um, and like you said, I, I have some uh, experience in the e-commerce space. We, we built an e-commerce store that went from zero to five million in the first 12 months. Um, so I've, I've kind of done a handful of things over the last 10 years or so. Uh, but my heart is really in the the home service world. I, I just love the space. There's so much opportunity in it. I think it's only going to get better. And and I, I truly believe people can, you know, build the life, you know, that they dream of in that business, whether it's landscaping or, or any other business in the home service world. Yeah, that's awesome. That's an awesome story. I, I agree with you. I think this this industry, just at least especially especially for the uh, landscaping side, is definitely going up. It's it's so much more improvements in at least the technology side and equipment side. It's just, it just gained so much uh, momentum here. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. I mean, listen, like it's no secret. It's hard to find employees right now. I think it's, it's only going to continue to be harder. Younger people are buying houses. They weren't raised to do any of the work themselves. Everything's going to be hired out and that's, that's just going to become better and better and better. So I believe the companies that can, really figure out how to create a great company culture. They can learn how to actually generate, you know, consistent leads that are coming into their business. Like the opportunity is endless um, from here on. Yeah, I agree. And kind of on that note with the providing the consistent leads, we've been talking to people in our program and they've been seeing like a decline here recently, the past six months or so as far as getting leads and stuff. And that's what I'm kind of excited to have you on here today. Cause I wanted to talk with you about marketing cause it, you seem to be a master at marketing. So I'd love to just kind of pick your brain on, on how landscapers can use marketing. Um, before we jumped on this call, you and I were chatting a little bit about how we see in like the Facebook groups, how the people say, you know, they don't need to market their business or they'll try something and they'll just kind of let it go or they'll try like postcards or something like that. They'll send it out one time and it doesn't work. Well, yeah. it doesn't work that way. So yeah, I'd love to just kind of pick your brain and find out how landscapers can use marketing. Yeah. It's funny you say that. And this isn't a knock to like lawn care guys or anything at all, but like the lawn care landscape niche is the absolute worst for guys that are so focused on like the equipment they have versus the business they're running. And I mean, they're, they're obsessed with what mowers they have and, and they'll watch, lawn care videos on YouTube all day about, you know, lawnmower reviews when like, like I get it. I'm a dude, like I enjoy that stuff too. But at the end of the day, like we're running a business here and it doesn't matter if you have an X mark or a skag, like they're both going to make you the same amount of money. So that's really funny. But when it comes to marketing a home service business, like it's extremely simple. We're trying to figure out who is our customer and where do they live? And how do I get in front of them as often as possible until they're ready to make a buying decision? And from a local standpoint, like it's very, very simple. Where do your customers live? Okay, cool. You know, the neighborhoods that, that your ideal customers live in. Now, how do we get in front of those people as many times as humanly possible? It's that simple. And so I don't know if you want me to dive into, I kind of have four or five things here that I think are very easy to implement into your business for very cheap. And these are things that this is literally what we do in our home service business to this day um, that has worked really well. Yeah, that'd be amazing. I appreciate that. So first things first, and, and this is, you know, there's two folds to this. If you're just getting started and you're like, Matt, I don't have a lot of money, then if you don't have a lot of money, it probably means you have a lot of time. And so basically there's two folds to this. You can either do postcards by hand or door hangers, doesn't matter. Or if you are a more established company, you can use the Everydoor direct mail uh, program through the postal service. So when we first started our home service business, I was putting out 5,000 postcards a month by hand. Like it was our number one lead generator. And the strategy behind it is you got to make sure that you have good offers. You got to make sure that you have a good design, good call to actions. Um, and when I say offers, you don't have to discount your services. You just have to package them in a way where it feels like you're discounting your services. So there's a little bit of psychology behind it. Uh, but we got really good at that. And so every 30 days, we would hit the same neighborhoods forever. We've never stopped doing it. And so to this day, for the last, gosh, I don't know, seven, eight years, 
we have marketed to the exact same neighborhoods every 30 days and those people get a postcard in the mail from us. So we used to do this by hand. Once we started making money, you know, year two, year three in our business, then we started mailing them. And then we have a consistent, about a half a percent return. And so we know about what it costs to acquire a customer. And now when I want to scale into a new neighborhood, into a new city, I have a proven marketing method that allows me to do so. I have proven templates, proven offers. Uh, it's, it's all based on you know, a track record and I can say, okay, we want to go into the next town over. We're going to, we're going to start sending every door direct mail every 30 days to these neighborhoods. And sure enough, it works every time. And so, uh, if you don't have money to mail it, I would be, you know, I'd be sending or putting postcards in newspaper boxes. I'd putting door hangers on front doors. And yes, that means you're going to have to walk. Yes. That means it's going to take time. Uh, yes, it sucks. But if you want to grow a big business, this is what has to happen. So that's a really inexpensive thing you can do. It just takes time. Um, I don't know. You can get, you know, two to 5,000 postcards for gosh, 500 bucks or something. And, and it's really inexpensive. The next thing that we do, and this is a little bit more pricey, but works super well is Google AdWords. I believe anyone that's run, not running Google AdWords right now is insane because it's a different type of buyer. When we're sending postcards out, we're, we're sending postcards out to a house, hoping that our postcard entices someone to say, oh, you know what? I actually need that. But Google AdWords is a customer that is looking for your service. And so that means they're a high intent buyer. And so if they click your ad and you actually have a decent landing page, the, the odds of capturing that customer are very, very high. And so Yes, it might cost a little bit more, but it's a lot It's a lot better of a, a potential customer than, let's say, something like a postcard or a cold call. And so kind of the, the thing with Google AdWords is you have to make sure that your copy on the ad is really good. But most importantly, when they click through, you're sending them to a landing page that is relevant to what they're looking for so they don't have to guess you know, like it does this company do what I'm looking for? Do they do landscaping? Do they do lawn care? Like it's very clear. There's a clear way for them to call you a clear way for them to, to send a contact form and it's professional looking. So, I was, sorry, real yeah. quick. That's something I, I talk to our people about all the time and, and stress in the, the Facebook groups is they don't really have a landing page. It's just, they send it to their homepage in, in yeah. general. To me, it needs to be kind of tailored to kind of whatever, especially if you have a specific thing you're sending out those postcards or not postcards that ad for. Yeah. So if you're doing fertilization, you need to yep. send them to a page for fertilization. That's many, many landscapers that just send it to the homepage and that's, well, that's not, not working out very well. <laughs> yeah. It's not working out well. And Google will actually reward you for sending them to a page that's relevant to what they're searching for. And so your, sure. your ad will rank better. But yeah, if you send someone to a homepage and they're looking for fertilization and they have to scroll through the page or go through a drop down to make sure that you even offer it, chances are they're going to back out and just click on the next ad. Yeah. So yeah, you're right. That is super important. Yeah. It, do you find that you have to kind of test those, those pages and change the words up here and there just to try oh, yeah. to find what works? For sure. Yeah. I mean, in our business now, I feel like we've, we've tested enough where we kind of know. So for any marketing clients we work with, we can give them a pretty good idea. But I mean, that's just marketing, man. Yep, yep. Everything has to be tested. Like for postcards, I can't tell you how much money I spent sending out postcards that flopped. And I could have easily been like, oh, postcards don't work. But instead, I would look at that postcard and say, okay, what, what on here can I change? And we would tweak an offer or tweak some wording or tweak you know photos that we have on there before and afters. And we would send it out to the same neighborhood again. And, and that one worked way better. And we're like, okay, we'll put this one in our arsenal. And the one before that gets tossed. And so I think that's just marketing in general. And like people have to understand that mindset. It's like, you know, they don't want to waste money on, on a bad campaign, but it's just what has to happen in order to hone in, hone in the skill. Uh, because once you have it, you have it. Mm -hmm. And so I think kind of having that mentality of like, even if this, this campaign doesn't crush, we're going to go back to the board and say, okay, what can we tweak on here and try again until it does? Because like direct mail works, the biggest companies in the world do it still. Google AdWords work, the biggest companies in the world do it. So to sit here and say like, oh, it doesn't work anymore. It's, 
it's very ignorant to, to do. It's just, you haven't, you haven't put in the time and you haven't become obsessed with your marketing to figure out why it's not working for you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I think a lot of landscapers themselves just kind of give up or don't even, they'll do it one time and that's it. Ah, it doesn't work. Yeah. That, that's something I see all the time. <laughs> yep. Yep. And so those are two. Another one for more established companies. And this is like one of the biggest things that people don't do. And it blows my mind is marketing to our current customer list. We spend so much time and so much money finding new customers, but we don't spend any time or effort marketing or upselling our current list. So I do a lot of coaching and one of our, one of our coaching clients, uh, just two weeks ago implemented one of our, our customer list strategies and he pulled in 10 G's in one week and it, awesome. and it was, it was all free. Yeah. You know I mean, and he had never done it. And so whether that's, you know, like our company, we call our entire customer list three times a year. Uh, we do it in the spring. We do it coming into our slower season, kind of going back to school, which is summertime. And then we do it right before our fall rush. Um, and so this is great because we can fill up our schedule with free leads. And then, you know, from there we can add new customers on, but if you aren't touching your customer list, whether it's phone calls, text messages, emails, you know, sending them reminder cards for services that need to get done, any of that, like pick one of those and just do it. You will extract so much money in your list there. People don't realize there's tens of thousands of dollars sitting in your customer list right now, 100% free. And the only thing stopping you from, from getting that is just picking up the phone and calling them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so that's a huge one. Yeah, I, th I think the upselling is is a crucial part for it. I actually just did a podcast on this on upselling and cross selling, just because it's it's such neat, so needed. Like you can walk around a person's yard, you can find so many different things oh. you can add on or throw, like just throwing out ideas to them. They are like, oh, I never thought about that, you know? Like, yeah. So it, there's a huge opportunity there with your current clients. The one thing I always loved doing was if I was especially I was in the neighborhood, I would stop by a person's house and just especially it's in the afternoon. I usually knew their home. Just, hey, you know, Mr. Mrs. Smith, just checking in, see how things are going, you know, just kind of BS with them. Not necessarily there to sell, yeah. but, the, oh, the, you know, the flower looks great. And then, hey, you know, we have a special going on in this right now or whatever it is. And, and oh, yeah. So it's it's a great way to kind of get in front of customers. Yeah. yeah. And, and another thing to think about when you talk about upselling, this is something that we do is when somebody calls us for an estimate, let's say they want to get their windows cleaned. Most companies will just assume like the potential customer knows all the services you offer. And the reality is, is they actually have no clue. The only one they know you offer is the one they search for. So when we go out and give quotes, which we do uh, online quotes, but we also do a lot of in-person quotes, we will quote the customer. We have a, a, a dialed in estimate sheet. That's awesome. And we'll quote them for every service we offer. And I don't like, we don't even have to upsell the, the estimate sheet upsells itself. Cause they'll be like, well, I called you for windows, but I didn't even know you guys offered house washing. So like, Oh, you have a house washing and window cleaning package that go hand in hand. And now my, you know, $250 window cleaning job just went to a $600 job simply because I quoted them for everything. And, and what it does, it does two things. It makes it so next year when the customer calls me, I don't ever have to go back out to the house and quote them again. Cause I already quoted for all the services and it's in our system. But more importantly is now it shows them all the services we offer and it upsells them without us even lifting a finger. So for landscaping guys, like that's huge, man. If, if you do landscaping or lawn care and fertilization, like you should be quoting your customer for everything, giving them options, packaging them and your average ticket will go way up guaranteed. I love that. That's a great idea. Great idea. Yep. And so customer list, that's huge. Facebook ads has been a really, really good one for us and we kind of mix this up a little bit. Our strategy is a little bit brand building and a little bit offer related. And it kind of depends on the time of year, like gutter cleaning in the month of November for us is absolutely insane. We could be doing 40 or 50 gutter jobs in a single day. And so during, you know, months like that, we'll, we'll send, we'll be running a ton of gutter cleaning offers on Facebook, but kind of in our, you know, our other times of the year, we'll run a, some different types of branding videos, which are extremely cost effective. And that's just to stay in front of the community. It, it could be some B-roll video of us washing houses. It could be, uh, we do a lot of uh, stuff 
you know, introducing new employees or something we're doing inside of the community or interviewing someone who is a, a high level business expert in the area to kind of show them that, you know, we have this relationship together. There's a bunch of stuff that you can do brand building and offer wise on Facebook for really cheap. Um, and the nice thing about Facebook ads is on a local basis, you can run like a five or $10 budget a day and, and still make a huge impact. And so, you know, like for my e-commerce business, we were spending, you know, three or $4,000 a day on Facebook ads for the home service business. You can run a Facebook ad for 10 bucks a day and, and have it make a really big impact on your business. So that's a huge one. I think everybody should be doing regardless. Yeah. Do you think the Google ads versus Facebook ads, one's better than another, or is it just something that's kind of trial and, and finding who your client is more so? Facebook ads is a lot more offer dependent. If you're trying to get direct sales from it, it's very offer dependent. Um, so you've got to be really good at writing your copy. You got to have uh, really good creative. So photos or videos, they're both great. I think Google ads, again, is a, a more high intent buyer where Facebook ads were more so trying to get in front of people and convince them that, hey, you need my thing. Mm -hmm. But Google ads is going to cost a lot more than Facebook ads are going to cost you typically. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the the Facebook ads is, is a little more targeted with, with what you said. Uh, I know a lot of landscapers are using it for like fertilizations or mulching or, just, you know, fall cleanups, spring cleanups, whatever it is. And that, that works very well for them. Yeah. I mean, around specific services, like, you know, I'm, I know uh, one of my buddies owns a weed man fertilization company down in Tennessee. Like the month of January, February, March, they are selling like crazy. And so like, that's a great time to be running Facebook ads super hard because you know, that time of year, your potential customer is probably looking for that service where maybe like in the month of September, it wouldn't make as much sense for him to run an ad for that. But maybe he's doing, I don't know, aerations or uh, something else at that time of the year that that would make more sense. So it's just really understanding when your customers are looking for specific services that you offer and kind of honing in your ads around that. <laughs> and like, I don't know, try to get creative. Like that's the biggest thing is like people don't even try. They'll just say like 15% off lawn care. It's like, dude, make somebody feel something, make them want to do business with you. Like, why are you different than everybody else? And the goal with all these things is like somebody gets a postcard in their mailbox or a, a door hanger on the front door and they see your brand and it's super high quality. And then they're on Facebook scrolling and they see even just a, a branding video of your company and it's super high quality. Then they're driving to the grocery store and they see your, your awesome wrap truck drive by them. And like all these things start to compound and build trust with that customer. And what we found is like some of our customers that we have have been referrals from people that have never even been our customer. And it's because they've seen all of our marketing so many times that we've just like automatically built trust with these people. Mm -hmm. And so like, you have to understand this is the goal. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think kind of go along with, I think what you're saying is you kind of need a plan. You need to think some of this stuff out and start getting a plan of how you're going to get all these things tied together. Because if you just start trying this and that, and it may not all work because you don't have all the systems kind of put together, everything kind of tied together. And I think that's, that's part of the branding as far as from what I would say is, is you have to kind of tie all this together. You may not be able to do it all right now, but start yeah. making a plan and making adjustments along the way. Yeah. Like if it were me, I would be like, okay, I just heard this list of four or five things. I'm going to pick one. And like for the next six months, I'm going to focus on doing that one thing really, really well. Mm -hmm. And then once you start doing that one thing, well, okay, I'm ready to add number two. It would be very challenging to do all these at once if you're not doing any of them. And so you're right. Like it can get overwhelming and then people kind of get the shotgun approach and they do, you know, 200 door hangers here and then they get tired and stop, but then they try AdWords for two weeks and they stop. And it's just this vicious, vicious cycle where they get in this mindset where it's like, well, nothing works. Yeah. It's like, well, no wonder nothing works. It's because you haven't done anything consistently. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, that's kind of a nice thing. If you start working with a coach like yourself, that you kind of get a plan and they know what actually works for your, your type of clients. And that, that definitely helps speed up the process. So you're not going out there wasting your money or wasting your time trying to figure this all out. If you can get some, some expert advice of somebody like you, it, it just makes it that much better. Yeah. And I think like the reality is like, of course, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of little things that we teach people that 
maybe they don't know. But the reality is, is like people know the core basics of what they need to do. Uh, they just aren't doing it. Mm-hmm. And I think like one of the most powerful, powerful things I have found with people I coach and also people that have coached me, like I spend tens of thousands of dollars a year on coaches for myself is the accountability side of things. And so I can't tell you like how many people, like the guy that made 10 G's off of, of calling his customer list a couple of weeks ago, he's like, Matt, I've, I've known I need to do that, but because you're holding me accountable to doing it, it actually happened. And so it's kind of a twofold thing. It's like, like, I think it's great to learn from somebody because they've already done what you're trying to do. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, but that person also holds you accountable to doing the things that you know need to happen. Yeah. And, and, and that might not even be a, a paid person. That might be another guy who's in business and, and you guys hold each other accountable. But for me, it's like most people know what they need to do just for whatever reason, they're not doing it. Yeah. We just started doing this with some of our clients for marketing is actually creating like a marketing plan. Like this week, this is what you're going to focus on next week. This is what you're going to focus on. And then having like that step-by-step layout with what you're going to do this day, what you're going to do that day, including like social media posts or whatever it is yep. that just helped keep them on track because they can do that. They can still run their business and still do all the marketing that they need to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really good. We, uh, we run a six week boot camp, and on our, our one-on-one calls every week at the end of every call, we give them one or two things of basically I call it homework. One or two pieces of homework that have to be completed before our next call one week later. And at the end of the six weeks, man, like it's so funny to watch how much momentum they have gained just in a six week period, just simply by doing these basic homework tasks. Mm -hmm. And they're like, Holy crap. Like I knew I had to do that, but like, I, I don't know, like none of them can ever tell you why they didn't do it. They're like, I just, I don't know. Yeah. And, And I think that's why so many of them renew it's because they're, they're scared. If like, I'm not by their side, they're going to stop doing whatever they're doing, which is fine. Um, but you know, even for me, like recognizing like, Hey, it's good to have that person in my life. That's going to kind of hold my feet to the fire. Mm -hmm. Even when I don't feel like doing things, when conditions aren't ideal, I'm still going to get it done. Yeah. And I I think landscapers in general, I know, I'm sure it's pretty much the same for most service industries. They get stuck, like you said earlier, kind of worrying about the equipment or the day-to-day things and operation side of things, especially if they're a smaller business and they don't, they don't have the mind mindset to, or not a mindset, the, the actual ability just to even think about these other things as far as marketing getting out there they know they need to do it like you said but they just don't have the bandwidth in their in their brain to kind of deal with that right now yeah but having a plan in, in place or having homework or somebody hold you accountable you you make such big progress using that yeah yeah i think people just need to shift their priorities i mean especially in the landscape industry it's like like probably your entire audience is going to hate me after i say this but your customer doesn't care like what equipment you're using <laughs> Like all they care about is that like their grass got mowed and it, you did a good job and that's it. Like they don't care. And that's about how much you should care too. And the only thing that you should be like focused on and obsessed with is how do I get more customers? How do I build a bigger business? How do I create freedom for myself? How do I create opportunity for my employees? That's it. But I think so many people have it backwards, you know, when it comes to that. So I would love to see people kind of like break that mold a little bit. I, I agree with you hundred percent on that. hundred yeah. <laughs> percent. And so customer list, Facebook ads, the last one, which everybody hates. Um, uh, but this has probably been one of our biggest ways to grow our, our business quickly is property management companies. We do work for so many property management companies within like an hour circle of us now And we've acquired every single one of them through either cold calling or cold emailing. And the way that we got the email list is we have joined, uh, they're like apartment associations. They charge us like, I don't know, it's like 400 bucks for the year. And you get this list of like hundreds of property managers that are also a part of this association. They have their phone number, their name, their email, like the company they work for, like every piece of information you would ever need to contact the decision maker is on this and it's a gold mine. And, um, so we'll literally just cold call these people. We introduce ourselves. We're, we're not selling them. We're trying to develop real relationships with these people. Um, and what we've learned is property managers are dying for like 
good, reputable companies that are going to stand behind their work. They're going to answer the phone when something goes wrong. Um, and because of that, like we have built great reputations with these people. The, the jobs they send us are huge. So it gets our revenue up big time. And they actually go to war for us. Like when it comes to quoting these jobs. So they'll sit down with, let's say a condo association that, that wants to get the whole condo association house washed. And they technically need three bids. And even if we're 10% higher than everybody else, they'll, they'll say, listen, we've worked with this company. Like they stand behind their work. If anything's wrong, they always come out and fix it. I'm telling you, it's worth the extra 10% to pay these guys and make sure it's done right. And it's because, you know, we cold called them. We introduced ourselves. We stopped in, dropped off business cards. Our sales guy will literally go around like once a month and drop off a dozen donuts at all these places, offices. Like you you just do the things that provide value to them to show them that you actually care and it just works. So this is a little bit slower of a process, but if you start now, like six months from now, you're going to start rolling in some really, really big jobs and get some big contracts. Yeah. The, the other thing too, like I found it, it kind of along the lines of what you said with your salespeople going out handing out donuts is go, especially if the uh, association has like a secretary, Yeah, get good with them, like yeah. give them donuts, bring some coffee to them. Like they love that stuff because they're going to help. Oh, this person keeps coming in here. They're going to help push you to that person that needs this, you know, the, the deal maker or whatever. Yep. That's who you need to speak to. So if you can get past that secretary, that's a, that's a kind of a good way to do it. Yeah, dude, for sure. And it's, it's like not that challenging really to get past the geek gatekeeper on those because yeah. like, first off, in my opinion, being a property manager, it's probably like the worst job on planet earth. Like their, their entire job is just putting out fires with like horrible homeowners. So if you can like make their job any easier, they will absolutely love you. Mm-hmm. If there's a problem in, in a care and homeowner is, you know, making a huge deal and you go out and like make her happy and, and take the pressure off of the property manager, they're never going to call anybody else. Mm-hmm. We used to, for our, our commercial side for maintenance, we used to try to set up, you know, meetings with them to kind of just walk around the property and make sure they're happy with everything, you know, and that's where kind of upselling like, Hey, that tree's dead or that shrub needs to be replaced or, yep. you know, bugs here, let's get this treated or whatever it is. And just try to get that set up. I think nowadays with, with so much advancement in technology, you don't necessarily have to have that person walk around because there's always kind of a hassle trying to get that person to step away. They're busy. Yeah. So you can take a video of that stuff and send it to them like, Hey, just doing a walk around, you know, just kind of check in here with you. We did see this, this, you know, here's, I'll send you the quote with it. If you're interested let me know. Yep. And that's a, a great way to kind of upsell the stuff as you know, going to without having to hassle that, that, that person, that property manager. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, the cool thing about the home service business niche, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, your competition is like so low level that if you can just be like semi good, you're going to, you're like, you're going to win. So if you can become obsessed with being like really good, you're going to really win Yeah. where other industries, that's a lot harder, but like, you know, this is no knock to anybody, but like, let's just be honest, like, especially in your guys's industry, like majority of people you're competing with is like one or two guys in a truck. They don't have a brand. They, they answer all their, their calls on their cell phone and they miss most of them. And they call the the person back eight hours later. They may or may not have a website. Like it's a joke. So if you can run a legitimate company and you can actually look at your company, like an organization and build it that way, people are going to want to do business with you because they know that if something goes wrong, you're going to stand behind your work where, you know, Jim and Bob in a truck probably aren't. And, and people are complaining about low prices and then provide your customers enough value where they actually like can find a reason to go with you. The reason they don't go with you is because you're charging high prices and you have zero perceived value. Like they don't see you any different than the guy with a guy in a truck. So figure that side out inside your business. Like when you go and quote a job, when you leave that customer's house or, or commercial property, they should feel like you are so different than every other contractor that they have talked to that that they feel like they would be doing something wrong by not choosing you, even if you're more expensive. Yep. I agree. I agree. And I, I know this is something that many landscapers struggle with, you know, they trying to figure out what they do different. I'm like, 
one big thing is just the communication. Just yeah. like if you have set up an appointment with them tomorrow, shoot them an email and say, hey, great talking today. Looking forward to meeting with you to talk about whatever it is. Throw them yep. an email. Just keep it very generic. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Send it out to them. Just That's just one touch point, and it looks a lot better than what your other competitors are doing. Yep. Yep, exactly. So, I, I, yeah, I love that. I mean, answering your phone is huge. Obviously, like if, if I were to call five lawn care companies right now, I guarantee you probably almost all of them probably wouldn't answer their phone. So if, if you're on a, a lawnmower or, or you're landscaping every day and you don't have time to answer the phone, but you're the guy answering the phone, then you need to hire somebody or you need to hire a company like Jill's office or something to answer your yep. guys' calls. Yep. And, and that's like step one. Step two is having a really good brand making sure that you and your employees are showing up in, in uniforms. Like you look professional, the, the trucks you're driving are nicely wrapped. They don't have to be brand new trucks. They just need to have your brand on them and, and look good. Communicating well with the customer, packaging your services in a way where your competitors aren't like, like, let's be honest, like you, none of us are offering a service that's like insanely rocket science, like detailed. So, so here's a little trick that we do and I don't want to bore your audience too much, but this allows us to charge more is, you know, like on our service, we'll call it our, our PPP, our personal property protection. And we give this away for free. And so it's like, Hey, Mrs. Jones on this house wash package, I just want to let you know, cause this is something that nobody else in the area does. We have something called our PPP plan and we're giving away a hundred percent free right now. So what that means is when we come wash your house, uh, we're going to come and we're going to water down all the plants prior. We're going to cover any plants that are extra sensitive because we use a certain chemical on the house that, that kills mold and can be dangerous to plants. But we actually bring a second guy with us just to protect your plants the entire time we're washing down the house. What they don't know is we do this anyway. We always have two guys on a truck, but we give them our PPP plan and we make it such a big deal where they go, oh crap, the other company has never even talked about my plants. So like, are they going to kill them? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, all right, well, I'm going to pay 10 or 15% more because th like this guy I just talked to, like he talked about my plants. He said that nobody else offers this and I would be taking a risk going with anybody else because, you know, and so like little selling points like that, it's like I wash the house the same way my competitor does, but how can I package or, or tailor my services in a way where I make the customer think about it just a little bit different where if they don't go with me, they're taking a risk by going with the other guy. And this isn't like, you, you don't, you don't lie about it. Right. But this is something we do include. Like we do ensure that our customers plants are safe on every single job. And I'm going to make a huge deal about it because that's a big deal to people. Like they don't want their plants to be killed. And so we offer our PPP plan 100% free with every house wash we do. So start to think about your services. Like how can I package or talk about my services differently than my competitors do that make me feel more valuable? I, I love that. That's great. And it, like you said, it's probably something that you're already doing anyhow. Yep. But they just never thought about it. They've never been made aware of it until you pointed it out. Exactly. The, the other thing that like I learned something, and something you mentioned, and maybe this is not how you speak to the customers. One thing I learned, at least for the water feature side, we never called it chemicals. We called yep. it treatments. For sure. It's the, the wording because nobody wants to have chemicals. Yeah. So if you use word treatment, they, they, Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, we call it cleaning solution. Okay. So Perfect. yeah, we, yeah. we use a certain cleaning solution. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the, the second you say the word chemical, it's game over. Yeah. Yeah. Wording words matter. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. So words matter. yeah. So those are kind of my five things. Postcards, okay. Google AdWords, uh, be always marketing your customer list. Um, it is your job to follow up with the customer to get them to repeat with you. It's not the customer's job. I know everybody would love to think the customer thinks about your business as much as you do. They don't. <laughs> they probably honestly don't even remember the name of your company. So follow up your customer list, Facebook ads, and then I would be cold calling property managers like it is my job. Those are some great, great things. Uh, one one th quick thing I wanted to ask yeah. about. What's your thoughts on website? Is it a necessity? Uh, I had somebody ask this in a Facebook group the other day. I threw out there that it's needed and, and kind of went on it. it. It's amazing some of the comments out there. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. <laughs> it's 2023. Like, like, I don't know. Like, ha do you go on Google and look up stuff when you need something? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I think if anyone argues that they don't need a website, like, if that guy's in my market, I am putting him out of business guaranteed. And, and he'll argue he's been around for 20 years or whatever. That's fine. But I bet you he's small. 
Yep. He's he's definitely a small thinker. And so, yes, everybody needs a website. And even like just a website almost isn't even enough anymore. Like you have to become, you have to create landing pages on your site that are like good, like that convert well. Yeah, you know I mean, because it's, it's getting harder and harder. And so like these young guys that are going into the home service business space that understand marketing, that are coming into new markets and they're building out, they're building out funnels and they're building out landing pages and websites. Like they're going to smash you if you have the mentality that you don't need a website or that you don't need to, to market your business. Like I see it in the groups all the time. Like, well, my quality is what, what markets my business. Like word of mouth is what markets my, I'm like, no offense, but you're an idiot because <laughs> you're going to get smashed by the guy that, that understands what you're saying is asinine. And like, I understand doing a good job, super, super important. Like word of mouth is a huge way to grow your business. But to, to sit there and say, you don't need to advertise or market your business is like, the smallest form of thinking possible. And you'll just never like grow past a, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year living mm-hmm. that way. Yeah. I, exactly what you said is what I, I replied to this, this person that said they didn't need the website. And then I, I responded back, of, you know, exactly what you said. You know, well, how do you find a service, you know, somebody to service your water heater or whatever yep. it is that you need for your house? How do they do it? And his response back to me was something along the lines of, uh, he speaks to his friends that are very, very anal retentive on things. I'm like, well, how did they find out that information? Yeah. So if you don't search it, how do they find out there? Yeah. Those, my, my experience with people that, like that, that are real anal retentive about finding something, they're doing the research on everything. They're yep. trying to find everything. So they, they did it. So it's, it, it all comes back to having a great website or some, at least something to get you started. You can always add on and improve it as you go. Here, here's like always my argument. Well, first off, if you were like to go behind the scenes and actually look at the guy's business that you were talking to, like you would never trade spots with that guy <laughs> ever. But every single person I know, like I just had a, a really good friend of mine, San Gamble. He owns a, a $9 million landscaping business just down the road from me. Like everything I'm talking about, brand, website, like it's so on point. Like any company that's doing real numbers, go study those people. Like go study your competitors that are doing seven, eight figures a year and do everything they're doing. And I guarantee you, like, there will be no argument after that. You won't be able to, like, there is, I'm sure there is somewhere, but on typically there is no company out there doing $10 million a year that doesn't have a website, that doesn't have a good brand, that doesn't wrap their trucks, that doesn't market their business, like all this stuff. It just doesn't exist. Yep. Yep. I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, it was, so, just, it was just funny. I, I thank you for sharing that. I just love to hear your thoughts on that and hear what other professionals are saying. <laughs> yeah, you just, I, I think those types of people, like you just can't help. And it's, it's always the same guys on the forums or the Facebook groups that are commenting. And it's like, well, dude, if you were actually busy, I would know that you couldn't comment back in 30 seconds every single time. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's that. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, Matt, this is some, some amazing stuff here. And I gr- appreciate you sharing all that stuff. If people are interested in learning a bit more about your coaching and your podcast, you mind sharing a little bit of information about that? Yeah, they can just go to a uh, service industry um, And I also run a podcast called the service industry podcast. I don't know. We have close to 170 episodes on there. And uh, I think it's, it's very marketing mindset systems, um, you're not going to hear much equipment talk, uh, but if you want to grow a big business and, and you want to, you know, kind of hear all the things that I did right and did wrong um, and learn from those, that's a, a really good resource. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you, Matt. I appreciate you being on the show today and I look forward to, uh, you know, working with you and then chat with you some more. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. All right, Matt. Have a great one. We'll talk to you yeah. soon. All right. Take care.